Day two of NBA free agency is underway. I'm your host, Harrison Graham, for Dallas Mavericks Today by Chat Sports. And we've got some news to get to, and then a few rumors items as well, so stick around for that part of the video. But the Mavericks have signed another player. They have brought back Theo Pinson, who was on a two-way contract a year ago. Adrian Wojnarowski broke the deal just a little bit ago. One-year deal, I think safe to assume this will be for a vet's minimum contract, considering he was on that two-way last year. Tim McMahon, who's covered the Mavs in the NBA for a while, uh, added this as well. Mavs made Theo Pinson a priority because he's such a critical part of the chemistry and culture. They believe Pinson, who is no longer eligible for a two-way deal, has developmental potential. So I think the first part of that is really the key here. Key culture guy, uh, Theo Pinson, is. he was a part of the bench mob, which obviously took off in the postseason last year to a point where uh, they were getting fined because, uh, you know, the NBA is lame and doesn't like uh, to have fun. But uh, uh, he's a part of that. He's a culture guy. He gets along with everybody. And he's still young enough to maybe just maybe he develops into a role player at some point in time. He was always the first guy off the bench uh, during timeouts, you know, uh, keeping the guy's uh, energy and positivity up. Uh, you know, like I said, the bench mob was huge in the postseason. He was a big part of that as well. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see if he can carve out a role for himself. Remember, the Mavs shipped four players to Houston for Christian Wood, so they need end-of-the-roster type of vet minimum pieces anyway. And Theo Pinson, they already know what they bring to uh, he brings to the team from a culture standpoint. Now, we'll see if he develops into a player uh, that can actually play. If not, the last player or two on most teams' rosters don't really play that much anyway, so it's not that big of a deal. I like it overall. He's a good positive guy to have around. Are you happy that Theo Pinson is back? Type Y for yes, type N for no. Let me know down in the comments section, are you happy to have Theo Pinson back on the bench mob, and maybe just maybe he'll turn into a decent player. Now, last year, 19 games uh, playing on that two-way deal when he did play, uh, just under eight minutes a game, couple two and a half points, grabbed a rebound. 33.3% from three, so I mean, you know, that's not completely horrendous. Could he be a 35, 36% uh, percent three-point shooter? He's a pretty decent defender because he's long and athletic. Uh, so there's some physical tools to work with there for Theo Pinson if they believe he can develop into something. I mean, you think about like Sterling Brown last year. He gave this team nothing. I think Theo Pinson can give you similar uh, stuff to what he did, if not maybe a little bit more as well. I mean, for now, for being completely honest, Pinson's not a rotation piece. He's back into the roster. He's not going to be on an opening night rotation, but he'll get a chance to develop a little bit further. He's still young enough. Um, he was a good player in college. We'll see if he can uh, become that down the road. But again, if you're going to have guys slot 13, 14, 15 at the end of the roster, they need to give you something. One, you need to trust that they can give you a little bit something on the court. Or two, they need to provide something else. And he provides that energy, that positivity, that bench mob mentality. that And those things matter when building a a high-level team. You need good culture, and Theo Pinson's a big part of that, and especially when losing a guy like Boban Marjanovic, who obviously was a part of that, uh, keeping a guy like Pinson uh, in Dallas, I think, is very, very important. Now, Mavericks fans, for agency, just getting going here, so we'll have you covered with more moves that take place, whether it's news, for agency rumors, trade buzz that's out there. Uh, more coverage to come here on Dallas Mavericks today, so go ahead and hit that big red subscribe button. Uh, share that link below with a friend. It's youtube.com slash MavsTV. We're almost at 19,000 subs. Help us get there by subscribing. It's 100% free. Now, I did want to kind of hit this, and this is speculative, I'll call it. Tim Cato, who covers the Mavs for The Athletic, kind of loosely tweeted this out last night. I'd imagine some combination of Dwight Powell, Tim Hardaway, and Davis Bertans are going to be traded soon. He also added this in a tweet thread. Anyway, this tweet was meant to indicate that I'd imagine the Mavericks are shopping the combination of players to a number of different teams tonight. They aren't going to salary dump. We'll see if they find a deal that works. Well, number one, like I said, this doesn't sound, it doesn't seem like a report. Uh, this seems like speculation that could make sense, right? Now, I will say this. We'll get to Bertans and Pal in a second. With Brunson out, 
I think Tim Hardaway Jr. is almost certainly staying because you need another guard uh, that can play the two, whether it's as a starter or a backup. Obviously, Spencer Dinwiddie is going to be your second creator behind Luka Doncic unless you go add someone like a Colin Sexton. Uh, but I expect Dinwiddie to come off the bench. I think TH Day likely plugs into the starting lineup as the two guard where Jalen Brunson was. Uh, so I think that's number one. Now, as far as Bertans and Palgo, yeah, I think you could shed those salaries, uh, maybe uh, pull off a sign and trade uh, for a player with those two players plus the 2025-2027 first-round picks that are tradable. That could be in store, uh, but uh, I do not think Tim Hardaway Jr. will get traded. We'll just have to wait and see as we get closer and closer, you know, further along into the offseason, I should say. But I do think some more moves could happen, but I'd be surprised at this point if Hardaway was a part of any of those. Name a player that the Mavs should go ahead and trade away. I think Dwight Powell is the first name that comes to mind with Christian Wood and JaVale McGee on board, plus uh, still having Maxi Kleba. I'm not really sure what Dwight Powell's role is. Uh, I don't know if he'd be in the rotation right now. Maybe is a light minutes on the off the bench type of guy, but uh, I think trading Dwight Powell, and then I'd probably put Davis Breton second as a couple of guys that I would look to trade. Let me know what you guys think. Name a player that you think the Mavs should go ahead and trade away. All right, uh, is Dallas going to sign Goran Dragic? Uh, the rumors are certainly picking up after Brunson uh, did exit for the New York Knicks. Uh, these were already kind of in the works, uh, these rumors. Uh, they've been rumored uh, forever because Dragic, the whole Dragic and Doncic connection, I think that just makes sense to begin with. But now with Brunson gone, Dragic could actually have a role on this team coming off the bench. Mark Stein uh, tweeted this out last night uh, as covered in a couple of previous pieces. Dallas is not expected to immediately pursue guards after losing Jalen Brunson with Spencer Dinwiddie in place and Tim Hardaway Jr. due back from uh, injury. Goran Dragic is a strong eventual target after the Mavs uh, chase wing and front line depth. Now, you've added JaVale McGee last night, so I think that could fill that front line depth uh, that he's talking about there. I expect eventually Goran Dragic is going to end up in Dallas, and he's going to be your third or fourth uh, creator behind Doncic, Dinwiddie, and then maybe another player. Uh, I think you can get uh, Dragic uh, for the vet minimum, which uh, currently is pretty much all you can pay unless you do clear out some salary. Now, Dragic is still a good creator. Four assists per game for the Nets last year in limited action. The shooting splits were not good, though. Under 40% from the field, 25% from three, whereas historically he's been in the mid-40s and then mid-high 30s from three in his career. Now, he missed a lot of – he sat out most of the year, eventually signed with the net, small sample size. Can he shoot the ball better next year? You're hopeful, but let's be clear. I don't think you're getting 16.7 assists Goran Dragic from the Heat when they made the finals a few years ago. I don't think that's realistic. But can he give you 15 minutes off the bench uh, and some decent play? I do think that's a possibility. And if nothing else, it'll keep Luka Doncic happy to have uh, a familiar face around the Dallas Mavericks. Do you want to sign Goran Dragic? Type W for want or type P for pass, you're not interested. Um, as long as the role is not more than it needs to be, I am open to this. Uh, but if, you know, he wants 20, 25 minutes per game, I'm not sure uh, I would be interested in that type of commitment. All right, day two of free agency is ongoing here. We're going to be live uh, for several hours today on our main Chat Sports YouTube channel. If you see this thumbnail, you know you're in the right place. You'll see me, Chase Sr., uh, maybe a couple of other guys uh, on the show today bring you the latest NBA free agency signings. And, of course, if the Mavs make moves, we'll have you covered. Go join us over there, youtube.com slash chatsportstv, and we'll see you guys soon on Chat Sports. Thank you.